Life. Hello, everyone. Uh, Nikki Hawkins here, West Ham Fan TV. Uh, back once again with West Ham Fan TV Live and Uncut uh, with my old mate Ryan Archer. How you doing, mate? Hello, mate. I always think you're going to start that off with back once again with a really good master. Master. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right, people. mate. Um, after the past few weeks, I thought I'd go a bit retro tonight and uh, relive the old days, the good seasons, the good, yeah. the good badge. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's, it's the only thing that didn't need ironing, to be fair. Nothing, nothing much to be cheering. Do you like my beard? I'm growing a beard, by the way. Yeah, you look well, mate. Yeah, you well. thank you. you've got more hair on your chin than your head in the top of your head. <laughs> well, I'm well, but uh, head's upside down. Uh, thank you to everyone else that's, that's starting to join us in the stream at the minute. Um, the title of the video, mate, is Grady D and Garner will not return in January. Um, should we get straight into this? But, but uh, before we do get straight into this. Are you watching the boxing on Sunday? What, the uh, KSI versus um, Olgan? What's his name? Paul Logan. Logan. Yeah. Paul Logan. Do you know what, mate? No, I won't be watching it um, because it's not really a fight that interests me. And plus, uh, I've got to get up early on Sunday. So, no, I won't be watching it. I'll probably watch the highlights. But I'll I'll watch the... um, the Billy Joe Saunders fight on the undercard. I can't believe that Billy Joe Saunders, world champion, is on the undercard of two YouTube fighters. Just shows you are how you, big, powerful YouTube's getting, mate. Are you against it or not? No, I'm not really against it. Um, it's, it is where it is. Good luck to them. I mean, they're raking in a lot of money um, for this fight. So fair play to them. You know, if they, if they, if they can sell out the Staples Centre in LA, which even a lot of professional boxers can't do, um, mm. they don't need much promotion. I uh, just see, funny enough, I was watching Sky Sports News earlier and Johnny Nelson was on there and he was talking about it and he said, like, kids these days don't even know who people like Elvis are, but they know who KSI are and things like that. And yeah, it's crazy. crazy. It's crazy, the power of uh, YouTube. But I see Ethan Bazinga out there. Um, yeah. So good luck to him. Good luck to him. I- I've got nothing against it. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, back to the football, of course. Um, yeah, if Dean Garner will not be returning in January, is this something you can get behind, Ryan? Is this something that you agree with? Yeah, I, I sort of agree with it. Um, I've said a couple of weeks ago that I'd like to see him back, but that's because I was just thinking that um, we're playing poor and we need as many bodies as we can. But I think it's right for Dia Garner to start um, West Brom. I think he's having a fantastic season. I watched the game the other day. Uh, he won the penalty. He set up the first goal. He, he, he needs that experience because uh, West Brom's a great, great club. Obviously, Bilic is there. Uh, they're doing well. Um, it looks like they're going to be close at the end of the season to maybe winning the league or if not getting promoted. So it'd be good for Dear Garner. It's good experience for him. And uh, hopefully next season um, in the summer. But you never know. If West Brom get promoted, mate, they might offer us a bit of money for him. And you know what our board are like. If they offer something like 15, 20 million, they're going to take it. I don't think they'll take 15, 20 for him. I think he's worth a lot more than that. I think uh, I'm, I'm totally behind this. I don't I don't think we should recall him. I think we, you know, with Antonio coming back after international break, uh, I think we should have plenty to be getting on with, to be quite honest. We are, I like him to get experience. He, you know, people have been saying, oh, no, recall him. You know, there's no point in having him out on loan if uh, borrowing him if you're, if you're sort of struggling. Let him enjoy himself. Let him enjoy success. You know, let him enjoy... Um, learning his, his his trade down there in the championship, it does. Yeah, look, the, the plenty of players. Yeah, the championship's a tough league, mate. Um, it's a, we we know, you know, we've we've been down there uh, a few seasons ago. Well, I say a few seasons ago, it's two thousand and twelve, but um, we've been down there and we know how tough it is. And he's having a great start to the season. Long may it continue. Yeah, he's, he's uh, let let him. You know, you don't. The thing about I remember Joe Cole. Back in the old days, you know, Joe Cole. Um, I can't remember if Joe went out on loan, but we, you know, he was a, uh, you know, a, 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 a big prospect, obviously. And we ended up playing him in our first team, and he ended up getting sucked into a relegation fight with us. Well, we got relegated um, before he went to Chelsea, and it hindered his, uh, it hindered his sort of development. You know, that you know, play, players that you know, like Dean Garner, confidence players need to sort of express herself, you know, and uh, I think, you know, coming into a struggling team at the moment, you know, I don't, I'm not saying we're going to be like that in January or, or, or anywhere close, but you don't know. But coming into a struggling team could hinder his development, you know. I don't want that sort of responsibility on a kid that young. Let him get 40, 50 games under his belt. Let him win the league. Let him express himself and come back and he'll be full of confidence. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um... 
I don't think Joe Cole did go out on loan, but I know Lampard went on loan to Swansea. Ferdinand went to Bournemouth when he was younger. Uh, Jermaine oh, Defoe, oh, Defoe went yeah. to Bournemouth. Even Mark Noble went to Ips Ipswich and Hull. So it doesn't hurt going out on loan and learning your trade because, as you said, if he comes back now, he's going to have pressure on him straight away because as soon as he comes on, people are going to expect him to do things. And it's not fair to put that sort of pressure on the young boy. But, look, Antonio's back after the international break. That's going to be a massive boost for, for the club. And not only the club, the fans. You know, he, he, it's, it's ironic that he's coming back against Spurs um, because he, he always plays well against Spurs. So that might give everyone that extra lift um, for that big London derby. Uh, let's go into the chat. Edward Denham's good preview over on Hammers Chat, Nicky. Uh, thank you very much. If you don't know, I was just on there just before I came on here. Uh, Ray Borum says, I love that shirt, Ryan. Mm. Um uh, Gary Page says, question, why does Claret and you put Amish chat on their website and not you guys? doesn't seem fair. Um, they don't put it on us because I, I asked them not to, to be quite honest with you. <laughs> oh, Jay? <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, yeah, I, I, I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll read it out. Um, <laughs> Jamie's Brit a comment. I've got to write it, read it out. Um, history is power. Let's focus on a proper sport like Paris sports. So he, he said that when we was in the boxing. Um, Kelly Sawerland so, 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 so says, Mile End Amers. Shout out to Mile End Amers. Emotional madness. Lads will be fine. We're going for a tough patch. Every team thinks uh, we'll, turn, we'll turn it around. Um, yeah. So, loads of stuff going on in the chat in a minute. Um, there is a lot of talk. Uh, we, obviously, we haven't been here for, for a week. So, um, there's a lot of talk about the manager. Um whether, you know, we've done this a couple of months ago and we got absolutely slaughtered, whether he should be sacked or not, you know. Um, he hasn't covered himself in glory, has he, Ryan? No, it's, um, it's been a tough it's a tough month for uh, Pellegrini. Um, I, like I said the other day, I've done a, a radio show and um, I've been a big supporter of Pellegrini since he walked through the door, but even I'm starting to question him now. Some of his tactics... Um, he's starting lineups, his decisions during games. Um, it could come back to bite him on the arse because there's the the ball don't want the pressure on them. So if people want Pellegrini out and then they're, the ball are getting the pressure, they might act upon it. I can't see him doing it um, personally because they won't pay him off. Uh, but I, look, I, I think Pellegrini will turn it around. I think it's down to the players as well. The players got to take responsibility. Um, Pellegrini picks the team. All right, it might not be the, the team we all want to see, but the players that go out on the pitch um, are there to win a game. You know, they're good enough. They're Premier League players. Um, I just hope that this weekend, Pellegrini learned a lot from last weekend and the Sheffield United game, and, and he drops Zabaleta, brings back in Fredericks. For me, uh, Ogbonna has to come back into the team. Either Diop or Balbuena could be dropped. And I think Masawaku needs to come in the team as well to add that little bit of pace down the down the left. Um, Lewis A says this is not a rough patch. We've beaten the beaten the bottom and second bottom teams and the worst Man United team this season is looking like 2003 at the minute. Um, I say uh, uh, there is similarities, but um, going back to Pellegrini and his selections, like I said on post match, I, I was baffled, Ryan. I was baffled by his team selection. And you said he's got to learn and all this. The old saying is you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You, you yeah. can't teach an old dog new tricks. We, we were and, all baffled, mate. I think 60,000 of us were baffled. But we, I mean, right, I, 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 I predicted, when I saw, as soon as I saw the lineup, I predicted what was going to happen from my seat. And I'm no football manager. I'm no, like, expert at, at management. And he gets paid £8 million a year. Um. I'm telling you, uh, this ain't dodgy going on. I, I think he picked up the wrong team sheet or something. You know, like the old Mike, <laughs> Mike Bassett thing where he's yeah. got it on the back of the back of the pack of the fags and he's got like bents and then edges on it and all that. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't I, I seem said, right to me. I said like, on post match, when... I said on post match point, didn't I? He probably picked up the Sheffield United team, pull it in, and thought, oh fuck, he went, oh yeah, all right, we'll just go with that. Yeah, um, it, it, it just doesn't make sense to me why you would pick the same team that really struggled last week when they've got really fast wingers and and. You know, it, it to me, like, I, I'm not sure if it, if it comes across to anyone else, but I don't think he, I don't think he's that passionate about the game. I don't think he's, he's got, you know, it, it doesn't seem like he's doing his homework, 
if that makes sense. You know what I mean? It looks like he finishes up training, goes home. He's, he's an old boy now. You know what I mean? He probably thinks, oh, fucking hell, need a little sleep. Goes to sleep about it. He just reminds me of that sort of person. You know what I mean? He, he doesn't seem to be putting in the, the hours. Like, like this, the, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to say that because, you, you, you know, you, you're you accusing people of doing things that, you know, you don't know what goes on. But that's what it seems like to me. If you can't see uh, 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 as a manager who's who's been at the top of the game, like the very top of the game, that you're going to get skinned by playing a, a right back like that or, or, you know, a team like that, we're doomed. Yeah, I mean, it also comes down to as well that scouts, um, what, what, were there scouts watching Newcastle in their last few games? Did they report it back to Pellegrini? Look, Pellegrini has the final decisions. You know, it's his job to also um, learn about the opposition and he has to pick the right teams. I mean, St. Maximum, uh, whatever his name is, I mean, he, when he, see that stuff, when he sees Abiletta, he was up against Abiletta, he, he was rubbing his hands together. Almiron. He was. Almiron as well. You know, they were swapping sides. They were, Zabaleta, for me, look, he's been a great servant to, to football. Um, we probably haven't had the best out of him. His best days were probably at City. But he's been he's been a good servant for us since he's been there. But anyone can see. If, if, if me and you, a normal fan, can sit there and see that that's the wrong decisions, then why can't a manager who's, as you said, managed at the top, managed some world-class teams, world-class players, why can't he see that? Why can't he? Do, why didn't do, he do, see do. that after 15 minutes? Why didn't he make that decision when we were one nil down? He should have had the bollocks to say, right, no, Zabaleta, it's not working. Come off. You put Ryan Fredericks on because he would have kept up with that uh, St. Maximum pace for pace. Fredericks is one of the fastest right backs in the Premier League. And it's no surprise that when he come on, they took him off five, mi five minutes later because he wasn't getting the better of Fredericks. Yeah, of course. Um, I, d I did see a little bit of positive against Newcastle. We was well beaten. I didn't think we was going to get back in it. 3-2 sort of flattered us. But it sort of... The, the second half display, um, the well, the last 20 minutes after we went 3-0 down, I thought was some of the best football we've we've played this season. And it seemed like like they was playing without fear, if that makes sense. We need to we need to show that sort of um, that sort of grit and and determination from the from the get go. Otherwise, you know we're going to be fucked. Uh, let's I'll, take some. Let's, I'll just on, quickly, mate. I was to say at three 0 up, Newcastle took their foot off the pedal a bit, mate, and that's why we looked much better because they Probably. just thought game over. You know they've taken their best players off. They've brought on Andy Carroll. Um, it's it, yes, it, it was a terrible performance, mate. Terrible all day. Gary Page says he can only win win with Galacticos. He is lost. Ray Borum says Eddie Howe. Hmm. Um, uh, Tommy Ill says we'll, we'll get onto Rice in a minute. I think Rice has been poor for quite a few games this season. It's one. Uh, it, it no one's really saying anything. No, I, agree. I, I agree. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, Terence Crane says he can motivate. He can't motivate the players. Pick the wrong players. Brings on the wrong subs. I agree with that as well. Akil says he wants Jose Marino. Not going to lie. Um, we all know with our loyal fans that once you lose the fans, it's game over. I don't think it's so much the fans that he's losing. I think he's losing the players because it must be demotivating as a player when you, you know, you, you sort of, you, you can tell what you're coming up against. And then he puts out a team like that and you probably think, oh, what the fuck? I'll be honest, mate. I know one of the comments there was about Pellegrini can't motivate the players, but the players should be motivated themselves. Uh, they're walking onto a pitch playing for West Ham in the Premier League. If they're not motivated to play a game of football in the Premier League, then they shouldn't be a footballer. Yeah, the thing is with uh, um, with 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 that sort of thing, mate. You know, my you know, there's too many uh, there's too many pampered souls at the minute. Um, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. Um, th this is one. Uh, that I was going to bring up. Miles Avery says, rumours our director of football, Husilios, is facing the sack, Nicky. Um, yeah, yeah, something about because uh, of the signings of Roberto and Sanchez. I mean, come on. I mean, he's 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 pulled off some good signings since he's been at the club. Um, yeah, I don't know, mate. I don't know what's going on. I think if you sack him, then P Pellegrini goes as well. It's a, it's a strange one for me. I, I... Has the recruitment been good enough? I was singing it. We was, I mean, everyone was singing his praises in the summer. Well, this uh, is the thing. Maybe, maybe the, me, everyone was saying that we needed this sort of director of football to come in. He's come in. He's done well. Now it's going, going a little bit wrong. Sullivan's probably thinking, right, I can sack him now and say, well, I've, we've tried it. It didn't work. But mm, I, I, yeah. look, 
Sanchez was a terrible signing. Uh, it's why he hasn't been in the team. It's, he's hardly in the squads. Uh, Roberto was just a, a free goalkeeper. Adrian left and we needed a goalkeeper. And he was probably, I wouldn't say he was the best on the market at the time, but it's what we it's what we got. Um, true, but when your manager is sitting in the dugout and not screaming at the team, it's not a good example to send to the rest of the team. See, I, agree see, I brought this up on post-match point the other day. I said that I agree. I love my manager standing on the touchline. Uh, screaming and shouting at players, but Big Sam done that, and he got he got slagged off. So uh, all managers have got different styles. We don't know what he's like in the changing room. Arsene Wenger was pretty much the same; he used to sit in the dugout, uh, but he was he was a great manager. So diff, different styles. I mean, some managers are not like that. Bilic was like that. Bilic used to be on the touchline up and down, but at the end of his West Ham career, he used to he was slumped in the uh, dugout. So. You don't know. You don't know. It's it's a confidence game, and if if you're winning, everyone's going to love him. If we're losing, he's got to go. It's, it's, that's what football's about. Uh, Zaid Zaid says um, recruitment has been good. It's the manager for me. I, I agree, mate. I think they come as a bit of a package, though. I don't. I don't did they know each? They did know each other, didn't they? Yeah, they, they worked did. together. At, um, uh, Malaga was it? The Spanish club he yeah. he managed. They worked together there. So yeah, look, I, I'm I'm I'll be honest, mate. I'm I'm confident that. Uh, Pellegrini are turning it around. And I know I see your predictions on Hammers chat and um, I actually think we're going to turn it around on Saturday. I, I think I think the boys, you know, it's, I think we're going to turn up and if we get a point there, it's a great point, but I just think we're going to nick a 2-1 win now. I do. I think it's, a, again, it's just a tough place to go. I'm oh just, yeah, of course it is. It's every, tough, everything man. about it, everything about it seems to me like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling it. If you know what I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not feeling the ten hour round trip. But the thing is, like, we're pretty much similar on form this season. We're on thirteen, they're on twelve. You know, they're they're, um, we're thirteenth, they're fourteenth. You know, it's pretty pretty much the same. I think it's like. Um, it's a point, and the goal difference is they're minus four, one minus three. We've won three, they've won three. So it's going, it's going to be a tight game, but I can, I can see us, I can see us getting the win there on Saturday. Um, Neil Walker says, I think we will get bullied off the ball on Saturday by Burnley. I can't see us picking up points. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm worried about, to be honest with you. See, but we've seen, you know, the thing is, uh, strange uh, things have happened. I'm saying this now, but I'm only saying we're going to win if if he picks the right starting lineup, and I think he needs to bring someone like. Lanzini back into the starting lineup just to give I us agree. that little bit, little bit of flair in midfield. Um, Lanzini's got a, a lot to do. He's been poor the last few games. Um, it's out of him and four nails, but I'll, I'll go with Lanzini because I just think he's got that bit more experience. Um, one thing we've got about 10 minutes left. So uh, let's take some comments again. Uh, Lewis, I don't care. Even I don't even care if we win at a weekend. I just want to see a really good performance where everyone puts in a shift and we play like with team spirit. Yeah, I would be happy with just a great team uh, performance because you know I haven't seen that for for a long time. Out I'll, Harry be, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I'll be honest with you, mate. I'll take a scrappy one 0 win if we play shit. Don't oh, worry cool. about yeah. one house pattern, good football, and lose two 0 At the uh, moment. We won't. We won't beat Burnley, honestly. They are, they are too built up for us last season, mugged off, and then we got Spurs who are going to be brewing with confidence. Um, why are they going to be brewing with confidence? It's been been terrible this season. Uh, Harry is power. We need to fight hard. We've got have we got the fight? That's what I'm worried about. How, uh, history is is you know I don't think we have got the fight. But as I said, they might come out on Saturday and uh, uh, and surprise us. Uh, Philly's big blue rabbit says uh, I'm, I'm well. I'm assuming he's a Man City fan. He's got a McMahon City badge on there. Uh, I think the talk of second another manager is crazy. The grass is always greener until it's not, and West Ham should have learned that by now. Um, I would normally agree with you, mate. We've, we, to be honest with you, we've got one of the best managerial appointment um, uh, records in history. You know. Um, uh, we've had a quite a few, but I think he's up to Rhoda. We only had like nine managers or something, ten managers. Yeah, we've had um, about thirty since. No, we've had a, we've had quite a few in the last ten years. We've had four, you know, six or seven managers in the last ten years. But um, I don't know. I, I just don't think he's getting a tune out of them. Uh, it's it's just it just doesn't seem right. You this, know, the... this is where our senior players like Mark Noble, the captain, needs to, and I'm sure he does, but he needs to start geeing them up a bit. You know, if Pellegrini, you ain't doing, if Pellegrini ain't doing it, then players like Nobes and the senior players like 
Um, Antonio, I know he's not playing at the moment, but he's still around the squad. Snodgrass, you know, I, I think we are lacking a couple of leaders, especially at the back. I think at the back, Fabianski was a big voice. Um, and he, you could see the defence was playing well in front of him because he, he commands the box and things like that. With Roberto, he doesn't. And that's where Diop, Ogbonna or Balbuena, they need to be leaders more. I'm sure Balbuena, is Balbuena captain for his country? I don't know. No, I, don't, he I might think he has be. been, yeah. He might yeah, not I think be, but, been. you know, we need we need leaders and we need, um, especially like De Declan Rice as well. I mean, someone mentioned there that he's had a few poor games. I agree with that. He hasn't been at his best, but he's still probably been one of our best players in these poor, this poor run of form. So he's putting a lot of pressure on him. People forget that he's still only 21. He's played, I think he's coming up to like 80 Premier League games already. He's, he's back in England squad um, this week. So it's... It's a lot of pressure to put on him. This is Noble's a great captain. We know he is, um, mm -hmm. but he has to sort of step it up a bit this week and and get them going, get them fighting again. Do you think we've got enough West Ham men in the team? Um. Well, obviously we've got Mark Noble. I mean, what club? Not a lot of clubs have got. Um, I mean, well, you, you see that you, Man you, United. Uh, it, I say Man United. Uh, when you say West Ham man, what what, what do you mean, like? Like, you know, people that, that know the club inside out. Do you know what I mean? Like, you you see at Burnley, you see at Burnley tomorrow, you go to Burnley tomorrow, they'll have a, a core of like four or five players that have been at Burnley since, you know, the, the dark days. You go to like a Swansea or so, they'll have, yeah, they'll have like a signing or two, um, but they'll have a core of four or five players. You know, when they was in the Premier League that, that you know, have been have been with the club for a long time, that understand the club in and out. Um, like people like Tompkins... Um, who, who, you know, who went quite a few years ago now. Um, Antonio, obviously, is, is injured. But, um, you know, people like that who who just know the club inside out, I think that helps a lot when you've got quite a bit of, um, you know, foreign influence in, in, in the club. And, and that's not a slight on the foreigners or, or whatever. And too many youngsters, you know. Noble, we all, we all look to Noble, but is there enough people like him in the club? When you look around the club, I mean, the last... You got to say in the last ten years, how many players are there from ten years ago? Winston Reid and Mark Noble. That's about it, really. There's no uh, Antonio's been there what four years, five years now. Coming up, to, Criswell's been there nearly six years. So they're the sort of players that you need to look around. But yeah, I mean, there's been so many changes at West Ham in the last three seasons uh, with a lot of players going. You know, you look at Andy Carroll. He was probably a, a senior player that probably knew he was there in the days under Big Sam when he first signed um, when we come up from the championship and things like that. So, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, but it's, it's these days, players come and go so quick. Uh, I don't think um, you get that anymore. I think Mark Noble is a dying breed now in football, especially at West Ham. Uh, James Fever says, question, what's Pellegrini doing for his eight million a year? I suppose to be attacking football, but we can't defend to save our lives. Uh, we've already spoke about that a little bit, James. Um, uh, Randy Jackson, what is the latest on an ownership change? Uh, we'll bring that up in a minute, uh, to be quite honest. There's a couple of more bits worth to get through. Um, Stephen Dan says, we have too many prima donna players. Uh, Matt Powell says, JM, seriously, Nikki is the best presenter on here. Sorry, Ryan and Dan. Oh, I forget that. Um, station station 3576 says, Colt and Cole. I don't know what that's in, in uh, relation to. Sorry, um, Matt. Uh, Lewis A says, let's do a prime example of what we should be. Well run uh, and, and and an identity. Good players without star names and all in a stadium the size of Upton Park. Um, uh, PZ10 says, um, evening guys, do we give Martin a chance in goal on Saturday? I actually said on, on the preview over on Amish Chat that I would. I would give him a chance. It can't be no worse. It can. <laughs> He can. He's not. He's not a great goalkeeper, mate. If I'm honest, um, but look, you never know. He could come in, but I, I don't think he will play. I, I think it pretty much. He didn't play hardly any preseason games. Um, I don't think he's going to start on Saturday. You got to stick with Roberto. You, his confidence is low at the moment. You drop him now, and his confidence can be even more low. Uh, Chris Evans says, with the problems with our defence at the moment, do you think we should have taken David Luiz or Gary Cahill? Um, Gary Cahill, I think, has been one of the star players. Gary for, Cahill, um... Ga Gary Cahill has been unbelievable for Palace this season, and um, they were talking about on Talksport earlier on on the way home that 
you know, they're surprised that he hasn't been given an England call up mm. just for the experience. Um, that's how good he is. That's yeah, he's, 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 he's playing really well. So, yeah, maybe we missed out on that one. Um, it was a free transfer as well, so it would have been a good signing for us. But I know a lot of people, when we was linked with him, uh, were saying, no, don't get him. You know what I mean? Uh, so, Slipstream's donated £2.99. just says Pellegrini out. Well, you can pay your money and say what you want. I um, think Pellegrini out, you need an, about another £20 million more two ninety nines to pay yeah, him off. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just keep on sending them and then we'll, we'll try and get him out. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. Don't don't shoot the messenger. Uh, Lewis, it goes to show how good Fab is, just how many times he saved us one-on-one -on -one and made stunning point-blank saves, keepers win points, of course. Mm. Um yeah, there's no, there's no hiding in the fact that our form's been poor since he's been injured. When he got injured against Bournemouth, you know, I, mm. I come out of that stadium against Bournemouth uh, and I thought, look, this is a great away point, a tough team. Uh, and ever since then, it's just been downhill and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. So I'm hoping that Saturday, mate, that um, we drive home uh, smiling, you know, happy that we've... Uh, Make a change, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but do you know what? If if we got a point, it's still decent. It's still a good result at Burnley. They're a tough team and they're coming off the back of a 3-0 loss to Sheffield United. But their last home game, they was 4-0 down to Chelsea at one point. Um, so, you know, they it finished 4-2. So, it, it's got the makings of a good game, you know. I just hope that we're on the end of the uh, end of a winning result. Chloe's moving the light. I've gone all dark. Um, one more thing before we go. Um, I'm going to bring this up. Uh, the leaks within this club. Um, confidence is low all around this club at the moment. Um, there are people, certain people on in the West Ham media um, that get sort of leaks of information, blah, 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 blah. We all know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to name them by name. Um these do, do you think these leaks have got to start right? Because let me let me write you something that this certain website has said, right? And I said on my Twitter feed this week that at this certain website, you'd be mad if you read this website because apart from getting a little bit of information, they just feed you shit. You know what I mean? One of the articles on this website this week was how how West Ham can help Spurs winless ring win winless streak. What sort of article is that? Um you know, and and there's a leak, an email, right? That a club insider has sent this this certain website an email, um, saying how disappointed they are with Fornells, um, how disappointed they are with Roberto. They need to see more from this. This is not helping, Ryan. This is Who not helping. That, sorry, what the the website sent that to the clubs, and they're not happy with no, Fornells? no, no. Club insiders have okay. sent the email to the website to publish oh, on their okay. website okay. Okay. Um, to say that they're not happy with the signings of four nails. They're not happy with the signings of this. They're not happy with the signings of, you know, they need to see more from hell. This is not helping anyone, Brian. No, of course it ain't. I mean, they, the club needs to find these people and sack them. I don't care who it is, you know, sack them, unless it's Golden Sullivan doing it. They can't, you know, sack themselves. But, um yeah, no, it's, it's it's ridiculous, mate. And, and look, all these sort of titles and stories are all clickbait, you know, to get to their sites and things like that. You know, everyone's done that. They've all done the little clickbait uh, titles before. But yeah, look, I, I don't. The thing is, I don't, we had I don't, another, I don't, I don't we had really, another, another really, web, we had another fucking thingy saying that, you know. I, I said that it wasn't you're not West Ham if you don't if you read this website and for my money I, I stick by what I say this website um, yeah, people and there's a lot of this game around that you're not West Ham if you don't do this you're not West Ham if you don't do that you're not West Ham if you walk out early you're not West Ham if you fucking it's just ridiculous mate this social media has, has ruined football social media money and VAR has ruined football in the last 10 years because it's just ridiculous, mate. Honestly, I mean, who, who who is anyone to tell anyone that they're more West Ham than than you, or or the more West Ham than the bloke down the road, or the more West Ham you're more West Ham because you sit in the corporate West Ham than than someone that's got a cheap season ticket? It's all bollocks. Mm. It's all it's all people. Some people must be bored of their lives. They must sit there thinking, right, what am I going to tweet tonight? Uh, right, let's tweet something that's going to get everyone stirring shit and moaning and. It's just, it's just ridiculous, man. That's why I just sort of stay out of it. I don't read these websites. I don't read these forums. Um, what, what, I, I, what? I hardly watch any West Ham YouTube stuff. If I'm honest, I watch certain things, and, and that's it. 
What do you think this achieves by releasing that sort of thing? It's not doing anybody any favours. We we see it a couple of years ago. They started releasing things to uh, I can't remember whether it was these fucking poxy websites or or you know newspapers when they were slagging off Snodgrass and and um, uh, remind me of his name Font mm. um, a couple of years ago. What is the fucking point? What is the point of all of this shit? Why is so, why is someone sitting there in a West Ham office telling Hugh Southern, oh shit, I, sh I shouldn't have mentioned his name. Telling the unknown website, you can you can edit that. We ain't live. Uh, <laughs> telling the unknown website all this sort of shit. What does it do? We all, we all know that they get the polls and all that, and they take notice of the polls that they run. The polls that they run to a couple of thousand people, if that. Um, but what is it that the guy in 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 the office? Getting by sending an email to this fucking poxy website and saying, "Ah, oh, we, we don't like him. We don't, you know, I think he, we think he's been rubbish and he needs to do more." What do they get out of that? Uh, honestly, mate, I can't answer it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're getting paid. Maybe uh, this certain website is slipping their money for information because you know that the clickbait uh, titles are going to drive people to their site and they earn money through that. I, I don't know, mate. It's for anyone that wants to go out and, and damage their club's reputation by leaking stories and things like that, for me, that's not West Ham. That's not West Ham. As soon as you start doing things like that, it's it, for me, it's it's all it's all bollocks. I'll be honest with you, mate. That's why I stay out of that sort of stuff. Um, I said I don't read the forums and things like that because I look at them titles and I think there's no point looking at it. Uh, Miles Avery said, West Ham fans TV, possibly to shift the blame to the manager and, and the DOF instead of getting the blame pushed to the ownership. Um, Rob J just puts a load of pound signs. Um, I think I think the owners, like, I'll be honest with you, they, I've seen people giving them a bit of stick this week. And look, we've all got our uh, issues with the owners. But look, they've given Pellegrini a lot of money. They've given him a lot of money over the past two summers. So, all right, it's not in the it's not in the regions of like the Man Cities and things like that. But it's a lot of money for West Ham. And we've gone out and we've signed some decent players. It's down to Pellegrini to work with them players and get them playing football. I mean, Sebastian Elia, someone said to me the other day um, about, oh, why do I always stick up for Roberto? And things. I said, I don't stick up for Roberto, but all right, he's, he's playing bad at the moment. But Halil was scored to, to, signed to score goals. Anderson was um, signed to create goals and they're both not doing it at the moment. So it's a, it's a squad thing and a team thing. It's not You can't just pick certain players out all the time. Mm. I agree. Um, well, we're going to start wrapping it up. Uh, just the mess that the club in them... Uh, uh, are, we, are we in trouble? Are we a couple of results off going back to how toxic it was like the Burnley game of... It's ironic because we're playing Burnley this week, but the Burnley game of... 2017 was it? Yeah, uh, no, 2018 it was. Um, yeah, no, look, yeah, two, two, two losses, and it's going to be can't people walking. We lose to Tottenham at home. You, you, you can already feel what it's going to be like outside. People walk past us on fan cams and shout things to the camera as they walk past. And but two wins, beat Burnley, beat Tottenham. It's all different. People come out and they're all doing the conga around the London Stadium. It's uh, it, that, that's that's the thing with football, mate. It's a results business, um, and it, it can turn. It can turn within a couple of weeks. The whole we could be sitting here in three weeks' time, and we could be talking about, oh, we just beat Burnley, just beat Spurs, and we just got a good point at Chelsea, or we could sit here thinking we just lost all three. We're going down. That's 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 football. Uh, ben Stanley says, "How can West Ham get his culture back?" It, that, that's a good question. It's tough. Uh, because it's never going to be the old West Ham. We know that. Um, but I think, I mean, when we went 3-0 down on 50 minutes on, on Saturday, now everyone there right has got can walk out. But to see half the stadium nearly empty after 50, 55 minutes, you know, I'm, when we got it back to 3-2, there was still five minutes to go. If that's a full stadium, getting behind them, you know, things could have been different. I'm not saying it would have been, but... It's it's difficult to to get the culture back at West Ham. You know we've lost a lot over the past four years. Um, it's it's tough. I watched a a video yesterday um, 
on on another website. I won't say it was. Um, it's it's a Golden Sullivan dig, to be quite honest with you. And I do agree to a certain extent um, about the, uh, the you know the the content of this video. Um, the culture's gone, but I don't think you know. Uh, no, let me rephrase that. Green Street has gone. Upton Park has gone. Well, Green um, Street's still there. Well, yeah, yeah, they're all still there. We can all we know we can all visit them, and you know they're not a million miles away from the ground. But that sort of match day experience is gone. Yeah, um, I, 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 the video was a good video. Let me just say that I don't agree with some of the bits that was put in it, but I do agree with it. Sort of like what he was saying. Um, I wish they would have been saying this a couple of years ago when they was getting you know favors from the owners. But there you go. Um, but it was it was a good video. Um, I don't think West Ham is dead. West Ham is not dead. We are we are in a, a bit of a shit place at the minute um, uh, on the on the pitch. But let's be honest, the community and stuff that surrounded the stadium, I think it will come back. I think that once we sort of get that stadium, and I do believe this was is going to happen once we get that stadium from LS one eight five or whatever it is. Um, whether it be under this ownership or the next, I think once we get do that, there can be stall sellers, there can be sweet sellers, there can be pie mash shops, there can be this, there can be that. Um, we can put our own catering in there and sort of things like that. Do you know what I mean? I don't f believe that West Ham is completely dead. I don't believe it. No, um, I'm, the, I'm the same, mate. I, I don't the, think it's the, the club, the club, you know, it, yeah, it is a bit of a shell of what it is at the moment. It is a bit of a shell of what it is at the moment. But the things that make a football club are the people. Hmm. It's the people, the people that attend the stadium. Yeah, we've been put in a place, we've been shuffled around a bit. But I do believe in over uh, uh, the next sort of... sort. Of, I, I'm not going to say it's going to be straight away, but the next five or ten years, I think people will still you know, we'll start to sort of find their place within the, within the, within the, within the club. I do think people will, you know, I, I believe that we'll, we'll own the stadium or at least be, have, have control of it by then, which we can do, then do what we want with it. But I don't believe, I don't believe for a second that West Ham, as we knew it, is dead. I, I, I don't know whether it was because I refuse to believe it. I don't know whether it's because it's my heart talking over my head or whatever, but the people were there. They've added more people. I, I, I don't think they'll stick it out for the long run. And I think there'll be more sort of hardcore fans going in now. Um, I think there's, you know, I don't think it's just a West Ham thing. I think it's a, it's a Premier League thing. But West Ham, as we know it, I don't believe it's totally dead. No, I, I agree, mate. I don't think the club's dead. Um, I think, look, if you look back to when we first moved to London Stadium four years ago to what it is now, it's a much better place. It's going to take time. We know that. Look, we all love Upton Park. We've all got our memories <laughs> Um, you know, I'm wearing the shirt that they wore the last night. You know, you look at this shirt, it brings back memories of that last night of the bowling, that last season of bowling. I mean, when people talk about the sweet sellers and the scarf sellers, all these people that actually moan about it, I bet you half of them didn't even buy off of them sweet stalls and them scarf sellers that are up to the park. They're just saying it because it, it appeals to people, if you know what I mean. It gets them on their side. You know, there will be... I believe in two or three years, going down that Olympic way, there will be stalls there. I, I, I think there will be. I think people... Then people were offered the chance to go to Stratford, but they didn't take it up. You know, the clubs are different. I know everyone goes on about, oh, we need new owners that's, and things like that's, that. That's because of the rent, by the way. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, I mean, the people go on about the owners, right? Now, as I said earlier in the show, we've all got our beef with the owners over certain things. Um... But as people say, the grass is not always greener. We could go out and we could get new owners um, and they might hike up the ticket prices. They might do a lot of things. They might change a lot of things in their club. And then straight away, people are going to say, oh, fuck this. You know, I want these owners out. Every set of owners we've had, people want them out. It's the, it's the way it goes. Um, now, I'm not sticking up for Golden Sullivan here, but I remember the day they bought the club. I see someone the other day say that, they never ever wanted Golden Sullivan to come into this club. Now that's bought bollocks, absolute bollocks, and I can tell you that now. I didn't know them at that time, but I can guarantee you they didn't turn around and said, "I don't want Golden Sullivan." I bet they was in Upton Park that day clapping them 
when they first well, come into the club. I'll be honest, mate. We we you're had telling to me, have them. You're te- yeah, you're telling me they were stuck with the, they were the, happy with the Icelandics that nearly took us out of business. Well, no, it would have been administration. It wasn't even the Icelandics when they took over. It was already, it, it already been sort of like it was already in the process of being winded up. Yeah, Golden, the one thing I would say is that yeah, I know Golden Sullivan. I've always said this. Even if we win a trophy and they go out on a hire when they sell the club, they'd always be the owners that took us away from our home. That's a fact. They always will be. But they're also the owners that saved us. So I know I know they've not had a great time. And they're businessmen at the end of the day. Um, they think about their pockets when really they should be thinking about the fans. But when you go back to Upton Park, mate, how many protests you, protests did you see to stop us moving to the London Stadium? None. I think there was a group of about 10 people with a, with a flag and a, a board that no one signed because we was all sold the dream. We all accepted the dream. It hasn't worked out how we thought. But... No. To be, to be, we've we've been lied to, we've been yeah, sold down the fucking swanny. Yeah, Simple yeah. as that. I mean, you say we've been lied to, mate. On certain things, we have, and I agree with that. But not everything, not everything. I mean, they shouldn't have opened their mouth eight years ago, whatever it was, now and said we're going to be playing Champions League football in five years because mm. that was never going to happen. Um, but saying that though, the last season at the bowling, mate, we was only two wins away from Champions League. I know that was a crazy yeah. season. But if we'd have got into the Champions League then, the owners would have turned around and said, I told you so. So mm. there's a part of me that's glad we didn't get the Champions League that season um, because Golden, David, especially David Sutton, would never have let us live that down. But look, it's, it's one of them things. West Ham will, over the years, we will start getting a bit more used to it. It's the, Look, we're lucky. Me and you are lucky and the rest of the fans are lucky. There's another generation coming through that will never know Upton Park. They'll only well, ever see they'll only ever see pictures and videos of Upton Park. That's it. We've got great memories of growing up as kids. We've got great memories of going to Chad Weef as kids down the training ground. That's not even there no more. So we're we're lucky in that sense. But it's about us now, this generation carrying that genera- carrying all their memories and that on, and hoping to build it at the London Stadium. Well, I tell you what, mate. You say about the next generation. If the two kids behind us keep them kicking my seat and screaming in my ear, roll, they might not make it. Um, they won't make pre-season. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's been a great discussion today. Thank you so much for everyone that's been in the thing. Let's take some quick comments before we leave. Um, uh, Paul McCarthy says, I don't think we, we I, I can get it back. It's not the same club anymore. Childhood memory's gone to crap for corporate nonsense and VAR. Horrific. I think that's down to... Um, uh, um, you know, I think that's down to... to, to um, the Premier League more than one than West Ham. Um, Gary East says West Ham fan TV shirt on EastEnders. Oh, is it really? I never. Well, I'll have to have a look out for that. Brian, you watch EastEnders tonight, won't you? Oh, um, yeah. we did it. We did have it on Amazon Prime. Yeah, old John Bishop, Peter Crouch, and Gabby Logan were wearing the uh, Noble for Prime Minister T-shirts. Yeah, still um, available in stores. Yeah, um, I mean. Go on, I'll go on. I'll read out some more comments. Sorry, I'm just going to read out some more comments. I yeah, think the props on. to the owners for turning up to the game. Some other Premier clubs don't have that luxury. Um, Tim Cummins says, do you think the two Davids have a way, uh, have a ways done for what they've done? Probably always. What? It probably means always, not always. No, I don't think they have, Tim. If, if that, if my quick answer to that, I don't think they, I think they've done what's, what's good for themselves. Uh, in the in the long run, uh, Oli P A J P R J says a couple of good results can change everything. Notice how Newcastle's protest against that Ashley has gone quiet. Uh, Output Harry says when we get Europe, I expect the vision that Karen Brady said we have. We would see flags, songs, atmosphere. Uh, there already is on, but better. Um, yeah. Uh, Gary Pace says I came over Saturday and asked one if I could rub your belly live. Yeah, he did, but you was interviewing someone, so. I'll save, you save, save, touch me. save it for Tottenham. <laughs> um, just quickly, mate. This, I know it's been a bit of a, a down the show, you know, a lot. It's good, good discussion. I've really enjoyed it. Some good topics, but let's end on a little higher. We've been linked with a, a striker today, the Genk striker, yeah. Mabwama Samata. I hope mm-hmm. I said that right, mate. You know, I'm not the greatest with names, but £10 million buyout clause. Um, he scored 25 goals last season. Um, he scored six already this season in 13. Only, how old is he? 26 as well. So, you know, they was talking about bringing in Giroud, 34. 
10 million buyout clause, I mean, I can imagine there'd be a lot of teams after him. But if that's someone that we could get, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't know much about him. I know he played last night. He scored against Liverpool last night as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he could turn out to be a, a real find if we uh, manage to pull that off. Well, uh, I've been hearing there's not a lot of money. So 10 million would be within their remit, I reckon. Yeah, exactly. So I think we're only, I mean, I think we're only short of another striker, another another midfielder. We've got to try. We've got to try someone. I, I know nothing about this geezer. He could be telling me you're signing Ron from up the road. In uh, I met in Aldi's earlier. We've got. I, we've got to try something. I never knew nothing about Sebastian Alia. I mean, people were going mad over Maxi Gomez. I never. Mm. Everyone was. I never knew who he was. Is Lanzini? We never knew who he looked, was when he came in. So, but this yeah. player's obviously played in the Champions League. Um, he's doing well in the Belgium League. I think they, did they, I'm sure they won the league last year, didn't they, Gink? So, yeah, yeah look, if, if, it, if it's someone that we might, I know someone tweeted it earlier, an ex employee put the emoji with the eyes, you know, that one where the eyes are like that to say, like, yeah, I don't, I, so I don't know whether he's just stirring it a bit or if he knows a bit more. We know X is a reliable source. Um, mm. But yeah, you, you never know, mate. Um, as I said, we've got a good squad. It's just they need, they're lacking confidence at the moment and, and one win can turn that all, all around. So hopefully it's come Saturday, mate. We go into that international break um, and we come back for the Tottenham game. Early kickoff, first kickoff of the international break. I don't think there's a Friday game, but the Saturday games. Uh, and, look, West, uh, and look, West Ham Tottenham's always a lively encounter. So it's going to be interesting. Interesting, mate. Right. This one. I'm going to put this one last one on the screen. Um, but we're not going to discuss that today because I want to do some research on that before we discuss that. But a very interesting topic for the next one. Thank you very much for joining us on this edition of West Ham Fan TV's Live and Uncut. Uh, my name's been Nicky Hawkins. That's been Ryan Archer. Um, one thing left to say, Ryan. Good night. Come on, you irons. Come on, you irons. Buy our T-shirts. WHF TV, Shopify. Link in the yeah. description down below. Don't Thank be you tight. Very much. Buy two T-shirts. <laughs>